That's all the time we have, but we're going to move over to the next round, starting with, with Smith, Sir Opitz. Welcome, sir. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here. You have been uh, come from a long way. Uh, many of you, thank you to the Ukrainian diaspora in Canada, which is unbelievably strong and vocal on this issue. Um, League of Ukrainian Canadians has, uh, has, has been certainly a leader, as has the Congress, as has Canadian Friends of Ukraine, and so many others. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Kozak for being here, former brother-in-arms. We're both now uh, retired, who has done uh, tremendous work uh, for Canada at NATO and uh, was, in fact, voted uh, one of the top 10, uh, 25 immigrants to Canada at one time and uh, has, has demonstrated uh, his leadership within his community. And I would like to thank you very much for that. Uh, I do have limited time, and, and I'd like to talk so much, uh, so many things are here to talk about. Energy, um, the, the natural resources of Ukraine, the gas, uh, and the ability for Ukraine to, to control its own future through its natural resources. These are all big questions. The military presence of Russian troops on Ukrainian soil provides. Uh, uh, the volumes can be spoken on those issues. The intimidation of journalists and academics, and as we've seen, uh, academics in uh, Lviv uh, be, uh, be certainly uh, intimidated and, uh, and forced to modify their views. And certainly the impact of Canadian NGOs, some of whom I've just mentioned uh, from here in Canada and Ukraine, has been significant. And they have made uh, a tremendous impact. Um, but I'm going to ask a couple of quick questions, and hopefully you can keep your, your – because uh, I'd like to get a few through. Your, your answer is fairly brief. So uh, just going to the election, in the medium and long term, how does Canada help um, assure fair elections uh, in the medium to long term? Uh, I'll tell you, Mr. Pichuk, perhaps you. Like Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible is the shortest <laughs> answer. Okay. Mr. Kozak, why don't you weigh in there? Well, I don't know. I, I disagree, actually. It's probably for the first time I disagree with Mr. Robichuk. I believe uh, Mission is, uh, is possible. Anything is possible. I believe one way, as I said, the word is engagement. So first of all, letting uh, President Yanukovych and his entourage known bluntly and clearly that the world is watching, Canada is watching, and everything he is negotiating, including the free trade agreement, is on the table, is at stake here, and letting it now prior to the election, that's first and foremost the most important step here. Secondly, it's, uh, I believe it's important to send observers to Ukraine. And third, I believe it's important to support the democratic, the civic organization in Ukraine, because they're on the ground, they know what they're doing, they know the system, they know their way around, and there will be the one who can tell us the truth. And if you look at retrospect, 2004, 2005, people said it was impossible to prevent falsification prior to the revolution. Well, I beg to differ because we did change history at the time. So I believe it happened once. It can happen again. We have to keep trying. Great. Thank you. Pani um, Hebmanchuk, who are MPs in Ukraine? Can an ordinary person run for parliament in Ukraine? Who are they generally made up of? Who can? Who, who, are, who is the typical member of parliament in Ukraine? You, you know, it's, it's a really <laughs> an interesting question because um, under this um, uh, party, party list system, uh, we, we had a lot of very interesting persons, very strange persons in, in parliament as members of parliament. And uh, according to the last opinion poll, 40% um, of um, today's MPs uh, are going to participate in upcoming elections in, um, uh, in upcoming election, actually. So that is, uh, that is a good statistics because uh, not everybody feels uh, com uh, confident to participate, you know. And uh, we, uh, we used to have, that is not a secret, that we used to have uh, um, people who uh, uh, people who used to work as drivers or uh, assistants or um, security uh, people, bodyguards actually, uh, in the party, in different party lists. Not only in party of origin list, but in opposition lists, and that is the reason why so many um, turned court, 
turned courts, we call it Tushkas, appeared in the last years. And also, um, uh, all businessmen uh, understand that without uh, immunity, uh, political immunity, um, their businesses, their personal security could be um, under threat. And uh, uh, of course, many businessmen are also interested to get into the parliament. <laughs> That's all the time we have, uh, Ms. Robes. We're going to now uh, move over to uh, Madame La Tendris for five, for five minutes.